want to thank everyone for attending this very special celebration. As you know, we have gathered here to celebrate the 70th and 72nd anniversary of the founding of the 8th Air Force. This celebration is part of the year-long observance of the 100-year anniversary of this building. The structure was built in 1913 and was designed by Hiram Whitcover, an architect of significant buildings in Savannah, including City Hall, Bull Street Library, and Sacred Heart Church. The Gothic Revival facade features fortress-like buildings. The building was built as an armory for the growing Chatham Artillery, who moved its guns from downtown to this location in 1914. On January 28, 1942, the 8th Air Force was founded in this building by a handful of Army Corps personnel. It is in recognition of that gathering that we are here today. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Ed Wexer, who presided over the traditional 8th Air Force candle lighting ceremony. Thank you, Commander. Uh, I'm Ed Wexler, the Post Chaplain at Post 135. I want to welcome you to our home. The candle lighting ceremony that you're going to witness, uh, some of you for the first time, is a tribute to the men and women who fought in the 8th Air Force and their family members and those who supported them throughout their mission. This candle lighting ceremony takes place at uh, 8th Air Force Historical Society chapters around the country. Uh, we have two presidents of the Historical Society with us here tonight. Could I ask for uh, Bob Buck from the Birthplace chapter who's standing way in the back. Bob, raise your hand please. Bob. The Birthplace chapter meets out at the uh, Mighty 8th Museum. Uh, once a month and we also have Travis Reynolds from Atlanta who is the head of the Georgia chapter. Where is Travis? There's Travis over there by the door. The 8th Air Force was activated here in this building on January 28, 1942. It was in February that a detachment of officers arrived in England to make initial arrangements for the housing and basing of groups to follow. Over 350,000 officers, enlisted men and women, served in the 8th Air Force in the European theater during the course of the war. It is for them, their families, our British allies, that we dedicate the next few minutes with our candle lighting ceremony. Chief Master Sergeant Retired Albert McMahon will light the first candle for all ground personnel. Chief McMahon served in World War II as a B-17 ground crew member and later volunteered to become a B-17 tail gunner and ball turret gunner, completing 25 missions. The chief served with the 306 Bomb Group. These men worked long, hard hours to keep the birds flying, but the hardest job was waiting for their ships to return. Sometimes they waited, and their plane didn't return. Sometimes their plane returned, and they saw others waiting, and theirs didn't return. Fortunately, although the planes didn't return, quite often their pilots and crews did. They returned through the help of the underground. Our second candle will be lit by George Bartell. George Bartell served in the 385th Bomb Group as a B-17 radio operator and gunner. On his 10th mission, his aircraft was shot down. He and his crew were immediately captured. He was held in captivity for 13 months in a German POW Stalag. George is a member of the American Legion, Military Order of Purple Hearts, and the Veterans of Foreign Wars. 
In 2010, he was honored as the Chatham County Veteran of the Year. These men worked long, hard hours to keep the birds for, pardon me. Bombers in tight formation, high above are the fighters that escort them, all in coordinated effort to destroy the enemy's capability to continue the war. Their skill, character, and courage and dedication of these crews are unmatched in human history. Despite the danger that awaited them, they completed their missions. We dedicated this candle to the bomber crews, fighter pilots, and the 28,008 Air Force personnel who endured the hardships as prisoners of war. Connie Smart will light our third candle for the family members. Connie is past president of Post 135 Ladies Auxiliary. She was married to World War II and Korean War Navy veteran Vernon Smart. It was hard, too, for wives, mothers, and fathers, brothers and sisters of 8th Air Force personnel. While they worked hard, to keep things going at home, there were many anxious moments, wondering if the next knock on the door would be a telegram with bad news. We dedicate this candle to the family members. <laughs> Richard Sadler will light our fourth candle for all our British friends who helped us in so many ways. Richard, who now lives in Atlanta, was born and raised in Britain. He enlisted in the Royal Marine Corps at age 17 and stormed Juneau Beach during the D-Day invasion. In eastern and southern England, the United States and England established in terms of men and machines two of the largest air forces in history. The bloody air battles launched from the European countryside brought appreciation of the young Americans by the indigenous population that transcended the clashes of culture and custom. Indeed, the bonds of goodwill established by GIs and Brits has endured with undiminishing strength for the lifetime of many participants. Bob Letcher, post commander, will light our fifth candle for those who did not return and those who are no longer with us. During the course of World War II, 26,000 8th Air Force personnel were killed in action. Many thousand have passed away since World War II and have thus flown their final mission. We dedicate this candle to the memory of all those who did not return and those who are no longer with us. Mm -hmm. 165th Airlift Wing Command Chief Master Sergeant Roy Patterson will light the sixth candle, honoring all U.S. military personnel currently serving our great nation. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand if you are able to join me in a few moments of silence as we remember and salute the service of the men and women of the mighty eight.
stations and flights give their medals to children who've never known strife because their peace was paid for by mighty and lies. Salute our dear warriors and bid them farewell. To the one still among us, we give heartfelt thanks, even though Father Time keeps on filling their ranks in the skies of our memories. The fly planes of live there forever and never grow old. Like the eagles we fly, like the wind you grow strong. In our hearts, in our hearts, you'll inspire a song. We'll remember and cherish the stories you tell. And embrace you, dear warriors, and bid you farewell. Day is done, day is done, gone the sun, gone the sun, legs from the hill. From the sky. From the sky.